Taz Grala, who just finished 10th, correct? Or no? 10th, I believe. 10th. Kaz, it looked to me, like during the race, that you were cautious, that the car was actually maybe a little better than what we saw, but that you had to balance what you did today with what you can do over the next three races. Is that accurate? Yeah, to, to some extent for sure. I think uh, we, we had to play the race smart. Uh, the most important thing about these races is to be there at the end. Because if you're there at the end, you got a good shot at finishing well. But if you don't make it there, of course you don't. And, and it's really easy not to make it there because guys do get very aggressive. So you have to kind of use your head and try to make your way towards the, uh, the end of the race. But also for us, obviously I could tell this car was pretty good. It was capable of finishing in the top 10 as we did. Uh, so that's a car that I'd like to race <laughs> as many times as I can and, and next weekend in Pocono would be a great time to race it for a, a, a second time. So um, I, I had to try to keep keep the fenders on it and uh, on one of the restarts we had a little bumper tag but short of that I think we had really a scratch on it. So um, not only did we get a good finish but they knew that we were here and we've got a car that we can just fluff and buff on and bring back to Pocono. So um, really I'd say we've, we've checked all the boxes for what we were looking to accomplish today. I am beyond proud of everybody here at Fury Race Cars. The amount of work and time that they put in over the last eight or nine days to, to basically build this program from just, just a few cars that we were given and, and that's it. And, and they, they did a great job at getting everything ready. We unloaded good, we only got better. They played all the strategy right in the race. And they did everything that they could, and we did everything that we could as a group. And, and I'd say that 10th was, you know, we're competitors. We're always looking for better than that. But I think 10th was uh, realistically a really, really good day for us. How hard was it for you to develop that knowledge that it's not necessarily about winning the race at times, it's about getting a clean, solid finish that will help you become a winner in, as time goes by. Well, the most important thing is that nobody wins a race without having a clean race. So step one is you need to have a clean race. And there will be times where you're not even close to in contention for the win. There will be times where you're right up there battling for it. It just depends on the day, on the track, on the car, on the scenario, whatever. But you have to be there at the end in order to have that opportunity. So I think it's just something I've kind of raced with my whole career. I've, I've never been the best driver on the short run, but managing a run and managing a race, especially uh, races as long as, as the Xfinity races, it's pretty important to know uh, when to play your cards and, and how to do it without screwing yourself up too early in the race. Okay, the average race fan also might not know, it's not like you haven't raced this particular car this year, because this is one from the organization that you were with. But did it perform better today than it's ever performed? Uh, yeah, actually, this particular car I personally haven't raced before, but it has oh, okay. raced this year. Okay. Um, but I, I thought it performed every bit as good as I possibly could have hoped for, and then some. Uh, I was really, really pleased with the speed that we had and, and the, the handling that we were able to obtain with it. So, um, all smiles around here. I think we're all pretty excited about the run that we had and um, looking to, to have a little bit of time this week to improve little, little details and see if we can only get better from here. Uh, with us being brand new to the series, the good news is we're probably not going to get worse. <laughs> we're only going to get better, so that's always good news. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, I'm really excited for, for the opportunity that, that we could possibly have ahead of us. Okay, your car owners, Tony Uri Jr. and your father, they didn't have any Xfinity experience as owners. Your dad could have maybe said, no, I, I really can't do this, but your dad and Tony Uri Jr. said yes. What did that mean to you for them to just take it in and say yes? 
Well, it meant a lot for my dad to to put all the the effort and the time that he did into it. But he is my dad, so it's a little different. But to see what Tony Erie Jr. and our other owner Jeff Fultz, uh, the the amount of energy and uh, support that they've provided for this program, you know, they didn't have to. If they thought this was unrealistic for us to do, they could have said, "We can't really do this. You know, we'll do what we can, but not this. We're not going to be able." But everyone welcomed us with, with open arms and welcomed uh, a few guys that I had worked with previously already this year, um, in addition to other guys that I've worked with in the past who already worked in Fury. Um, and everybody just went in and no one here is afraid to work. And that's really why we were able to run so well because there was a lot to be done. I cannot stress how much got done so quickly, but everybody, was all pulling in the same direction, and that's what made this possible. Okay, we I've read a lot, and and that that's been available, and talked about how much your crew chief and and, and all of those members that came over with you uh, put into this. But how much? How many hours did you actually spend working on the race car? Well, the race car, not as many as the other details. I mean, I was more of your parts runner. Oh. Basically, everyone uh, everyone on the team is better at what they do than I am at what they do. <laughs> okay. So they said, here, just go grab this, pick this up from here, go grab this, bring me this, buy me this, running around, um, trying to help however I could. I mean, I am realistic about the fact that I am not going to be able to work on a race car as good as they are. Um, there's a reason that they're in that, <laughs> that job title yeah. um, and not me. But hey, any way that I can help them out, I can. So whether it came to designing the number, designing the paint scheme, stickers to give out, running parts, um, anything to do with the marketing side of things, I tried to help out as much as I possibly could. And um, while I may not be responsible for making the race car go fast, I was at least responsible for helping uh, a few things get done that may not have gotten done without the extra set of hands. Safe to say you made it look good as it went fast. No, right? no, they made me look good. That's what happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you have three more races coming up, okay? Are you now more confident than you were even 24 hours ago? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know that we've got a good car, and I already knew we had good people. And when you get those two things mixed, and you just have a little bit of time on your side, um, there, there's a lot that you can do. Um, and the, the best part here is that um, everybody has the same goal, the same mentality. And therefore, when that's the case, it's amazing the things that you can accomplish. So Pocono and Michigan are going to be really fun. I don't know the track super well. I've only raced it each of them once in trucks. And we've got that funky arrow package. So mm -hmm. I really don't know what to expect going into those races. But Iowa is a place that I've got a lot of laps around, and that's the fourth race from now. Um, and that's the one that I've got circled to say, I know the track, crew chief knows the track, I hope we have a good car because we have already, um, then we can really go have some fun. Pocono and Michigan are kind of wild cards. We could be amazing. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. So that, it's just a big question mark going into them. Okay. What the fans don't know is, I mean, this is a four race deal. What do you do after, what are you trying to do so that you can continue to race after Iowa Speedway? Well, if we can try to make a statement and make a splash in these four races, we're hoping that we can get enough coverage to, to have a, a sponsor or multiple jump on board and say, we want to do this race, we want to do this race, this race. And we're just going to fill the calendar up as much as we possibly can. I mean, Hey, the ultimate goal, of course, is to try to run every race, and that's what we're going to be shooting for. But however short we come up, we're going to be excited about the races that we do have, um, and particularly the ones that I'm going to be selling hard, just for, for my own personal fun, will be the road courses and New Hampshire being my home track. So those are the ones that I really want to get a deal together for, so that we can go out there and, and try to make some noise. All right, I'm sure the fans listen. Wish you the best of luck and thank you very much. Thank you, Stan.